Chairperson Gutierrez, you are set. Thank you so much, everyone. In accordance with California Governor's Executive Order N2520 regarding the Brown Act and guidance from the California Department of Health on gatherings, this meeting is taking place entirely by teleconference via Zoom. The public is accessing the, meet the meeting via the Santa Ana YouTube channel or the city's website. The commission members and I, along with the executive director, recording secretary, and city staff are in different locations. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. I would like to call to order the June 24th, 2021 Parks, Recreation and Community Services to order at 5.32 p.m. Will the secretary please call roll? Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Wu? I see Commissioner Wu is here. Uh, Commissioner Nelson? Commissioner Gomez? Here. Commissioner Ramirez? I believe Commissioner Ramirez is here. I, th I think you're... Mike is muted. Okay. Commissioner Mouet. Here. Commissioner Torreblanca. Present. And Commissioner Gutierrez. Here. Here person, you have a quorum. Please stand wherever you are and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And next on the agenda is a time for public comments. Recording secretary, does anyone wish to speak? Chairperson Gutierrez, we do not have any public comments at this point in time. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is the consent calendar. Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I motion to I second. Thank you. And then moving on to the business calendar, Tonight, exec, uh, Executive Director Rudolph will provide a presentation on the installment of uh, Mini Pitch Soccer Field at Dolly Park. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I, I noticed we're having a little uh, technical difficulties with some folks, so I uh, hope it's not, hope you're able to uh, hear. Uh, if you're not, just let us know. Uh, the first item you have um, on the agenda tonight is um, uh, we wanted to get your input on a uh, Mini Pitch Soccer Field that we are proposing to put in at Delhi Park. And this is in coordination with the, um, the US Soccer Foundation um, Dick's, and Dick Sporting Goods. Um, essentially, they're trying to install mini pitch soccer um, uh, courts uh, throughout the county, throughout Orange County. And what it is, it's a hard surface, and I'll, I'll, it was in your attachment. It's a hard surface playing court um, it has fencing around it and it has lights uh, that would be installed. So what the community can utilize it for is to go to Delhi Park in the evening and use it for um, soccer uh, and programs and things of that nature. Um, we, the city, need to provide a cement pad uh, and it's about a 60 by 120 cement pad. And if you'll let me share my screen, um, a bill that would be great and maybe i can just uh show uh, the location here thank you okay so the location at Del High park this is where we are proposing to install the mini pitch it's 60 feet by 120 and we'll still have room for these two soccer fields um, here um, also the mini pitch is let me show you a different picture of it uh, this is an example here. So they'll have um, fencing all around it. 
um, Musco lights. There's uh, their state-of-the-art lights uh, from Musco, and I believe they're um, monitored by the computer. Uh, so this will be monitored uh, by staff. We'll probably utilize a permitting system uh, for people to use this, as well as have programs and activities for kids after school and uh, on weekends. Also, the Orange County Soccer Club is going to be coming and providing um, uh, clinics for kids, free uh, clinics for kids and, and things of that nature. But, but what I really like about this is that um, it's a nighttime activity. It's a positive thing. It's at night and uh, the lights can be on. It's not going to bother any homes. And so it's something for our youth to do. Uh, and so the court wouldn't be pink like this. It would essentially, I believe, let me just give me one second here. It would be closer to this. It will have the Dick Sporting Goods logo. It will have the city logo here uh, and probably the US Soccer Foundation. Um, but we're very excited um, to um, have been selected for the site. And this, this site was selected because of the proximity to a Dick Sporting Goods. Um, and so they're gonna pay $100,000 to install this. Um, the city will have to maintain it um, uh, as well as um, not remove it uh, within you know, six to eight years. And so we feel that we can do that and, um, and think that this will be another amenity to the community to get healthy, to utilize, um, and just gives us another um, soccer uh, field or court um, to have uh, programs and activities. Um, so July 6th, we'll be going to the city council uh, to present this and we're going uh, to enter into an agreement with the National Soccer Foundation. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see if um, you know, the council approves it, which they probably will, because it's a good thing. Uh, but I just wanna get your feedback and uh, any like programming ideas or things that you may think of uh, that we'll need to implement with this court. Um, I'd be happy to uh, entertain or listen to all those. Thank you. It's the end of my presentation. He had a question. Yes. <laughs> Gomez, sorry. Um, did, is there going to be any uh, security or any locked up after hours, or would it be open like twenty four seven for the community? It's it's really going to be open. It's not going to be a locked up facility because it's it's really just a short fence to keep the ball in. And, um, but we can program it, uh, like the, the soccer foundation and the Orange County soccer, when they come in and do clinics, they'll wanna reserve it for those type of things. But it, to me, it's like a basketball court. Let people go in, let, let them utilize it uh, during the day, uh, during the evenings. I talked to the director at Delhi Center and she wants to use it for her activities. Um, so it's, to me, it's kind of like a basketball court. It's open to the public um, throughout the day and the weekends. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Yeah, I had a question. Could you elaborate a little bit more on the clinic? You said there's gonna be clinic? Yeah, they, they are going to provide clinics. Give me one second here. Um, uh, let's see, the clinics will be, um, uh, one day, okay, so the mini pitch for, the foundation wants to use the mini pitch one day per year uh, for the first five years uh, for any kind of special events for the foundation. Um, in addition, they will be providing um, youth clinics and, you know, um, activities um, to, to, so they can learn how to play, so kids can learn how to play. Um, so we'll probably um, have an announcement and make sure the community understands what's going to be happening on a certain weekend. And then we'll allow people to come and, and participate and learn soccer um, and uh, um, uh, things of that nature. It's just kind of a beginner's um, clinic. A it's a more of a recreational, not, not a competitive type uh, program. Do we have any more additional comments or questions? All right. And then I do believe that's the end of the business calendar, but we do have some staff reports, correct? I'll go ahead and I'll uh, leave it to you, Executive Director Rudolph. 
Okay, um, the, we'll have Brian Sternberg, our library director. All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, having me this evening. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a quick update of a few things that are um, happening here at the Santa Ana Public Library. The first one is I'm just featuring a new um, electronic resource and electronic resources are just kind of a, a fancy way of saying, you know, fun things on our website to kind of engage the community, get people reading, increase uh, digital literacy, um, and really start bridging the digital divide. So uh, one of our newest ones is called BiblioBoard. And BiblioBoard features a lot of comics, graphic novels, manga. So if you're into those types of things, this is where to go. It's free. All you need is your Santa Ana Public Library card. If you don't have one of those, you can go to our website and get one online for no charge. You don't even have to come into the library. Um, so BiblioBoard, like I said, is, is comics. It also has some eBooks on there focusing on indie authors and things like that. So it's a little bit different than more than the mainstream uh, eBook platforms that kind of focus on the bestsellers. This is kind of like comics, indie, um, that type of thing. But another great component to it is that it has something called the Indie Author Project. And that is where local authors uh, can also share their own work and they can upload their book or, or whatever they want. And basically what the vendor does is it uses, you know, a couple of the, the major um, library reviewing publications uh, in the library profession. They will look at the works that get submitted and if it's selected, they will make it available to uh, people in your area, uh, in California. And then certain selected books if they're really good, maybe selected by Library Journal to uh, be nationally um, uh, nationally featured on BiblioBoard's uh, website as well in terms of eBooks that people can check out. Um, all the information is right at our uh, right on our library's uh, front page for BiblioBoard. Just go to uh, the library's website; you'll see it all right there. And I put in a link um, in the report uh, for you to see as well. The next update I have is about our children's outdoor play space. So this is something that we've been um, planning for quite some time and it's really focusing on, it's gonna really focus on the educational. So it's not gonna be like a traditional park kind of play space. It's we're gonna have books out there, we're gonna have activities and the climbing structure that we have is really focused on for uh, small children and the development of gross and fine motor skills. That was actually put out to bid on the 25th. Since then, the bid has closed after since I have written this report. And uh, it looks like right now we do have a low bidder. So we are moving forward with that low bidder and um, working with our public works agency. That work should start soon. So you'll see a uh, you know construction getting going on our children's library uh, patio. And that's near the south entrance uh, in the circle turnaround by the, at the main library. Um, next, we have a workforce uh, partnership initiative. This is from a grant that we got that uh, went to city council and was approved. It was a $16,500 grant. And it is, yeah, it is meant to collaborate with, um, sorry. <laughs> I'm here at the library. Um, it is meant to be a collaboration with our community development agency. And um, it will consist of the following outcomes. Uh, Pre-recorded virtual workshops, which have things like an overview of workforce services and library resources. We'll have resources for people who learn who need to learn to write better, to write resumes, job search skills, interview skills. We'll also be circulating uh, or checking out to people 10 Chromebooks. Uh, as a part of a computer lending program that we bought with these grant funds um, and hotspots as well to go with them. And then there will be a few uh, community outreach activities where the library and the work center staff, which is a part of our community development agency, will be at four locations throughout the community um, to promote our work resources and services. Then we're gonna have a job fair that'll take place with our work center and library staff. That'll happen. We've just nailed, nailed down the date recently um, after I wrote this report. That'll be on August 19th at the library. So we'll be promoting that as well. So look for promotions from both the work center and the library on that. Um, and then just to review a couple of our library programs, our summer reading program launched, pre-registration began June 1. 
Um, the program, the re summer reading program started June 14th. It will end August 14th. We're still using the online platform this year called Beanstack. Um, and that's where you can track your reading logs. You can win prizes and more. Um, you can earn points. It's really kind of a gamified way of um, getting kids to read over the summer to prevent that summer slide as they, uh, so to say, in school. Uh, you can register, um, and I've listed the website here, uh, santaana.beanstack.org, in the uh, staff report, and uh, you can go on, and the program is for both kids uh, and adults. It's for all ages, and we have separate programs for kids, adults, and teens. Um, then if you are a non-internet user and you don't have a connection, we still have um, the ability for people to pick up paper reading logs at our main library, which is still closed because of the renovations going on, or in person at our uh, New Hope Library, which is fully open. Um, and then just a few other quick um, programs uh, for June. We are really featuring uh, Pride Month. We have things like an LGBTQ trivia. We have a Cuenta Cuentos and La Biblioteca, storyteller in the library. We have a Show Your Pride uh, Grab and Go. Um, we have a few uh, magic shows that you can view online, which are fun. Um, and then some Juneteenth programming as well, uh, both take and make kind of crafts and trivias and things like that. Um, and story times attached to that as well. So that is all I have for my report. If there's any questions, I'm uh, available to ask uh, or to answer any of them. Do we have any questions from the commissioners? If not, I would just like to say that um, Brian and I are in a, in a great opportunity with, uh, and Brian is doing an outstanding job at the library. And I'm so happy that the library has a focus and is uh, their own department. Uh, and there's some great things coming with our cannabis funding. And then also we have some of the ARPA or the Revive money. And that will be going to the city council on uh, July 6th. And Brian has some opportunities to renovate the entire main library, which will be incredible, uh, as well as, uh, I'm giving away your whole thing, but yeah, I, I, I it's super exciting because <laughs> these facilities will, will become <laughs> renovated. And, and so, uh, and there's a lot of things for the parks and recreation side also. So there's um, some great things coming to the community. And so um, as soon as we learn that they are approved, then we will share them with you <laughs> or you can listen in at the council meeting. Uh, but Brian, great job and sorry to jump in there. No, oh, thank you. Absolutely great things coming for both parks and the library. Um, we will, uh, you, like Lisa said, you can tune, tune in um, and we'll tell you all about it next time. Thank you so much. Did we have any comments or questions from the commissioners? All right, and Executive Director Rudolph, I didn't mean to pass it over to you. I just didn't have the names of who's, who's oh, the staff no worries. Report, so that's why I gave it to you. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Ron Ono will be parking facilities. We'll put that on there next time. Thank you. Mr. Ono? Okay, uh, let's uh, move on to Ethan Fisher, the Santa Ana uh, Zoo. Hi everybody, good to see you again. Uh, so I'll give a, a report on what's happening at the zoo. Um, we had a few animal transfers recently. Um, we sent some colobus monkeys. They're big uh, black and white monkeys from Africa. We, we sent some of those out to other partner zoos and we received a pair from the San Francisco Zoo and that was a recommendation as part of their conservation program. We also unexpectedly received sort of received accepted uh, were asked to take um, eight prehensile tailed skinks which is a large lizard from the Solomon Islands um, unfortunately, there were a couple dozen of them that were confiscated at LAX and they had their hands full there and were just reaching out to whatever uh, organizations nearby could take them. Um, they have 
to go to zoos or universities or conservation groups. So they can't go to private individuals. Um, and we have eight of them and some of them are pregnant. So we might have more than eight of them, um, but that's that's been interesting. They, uh, and then in the future, we'll, we'll have eventually have them on display. Oh. The education programs have been continuing along. We've seen a little bit of a drop off in the attendance of the virtual programs. So some of those that can transition to in-person programming, we're, we're starting that transition now. So one of them is the Nature Labs. We were doing that every month. We might start doing that every other month online and then doing it in person as well. So we're working through that. Uh, also, there's a new program coming that's called the Zoo in the Park. And that's where we'll have a little um, pop up in different parks around the city. We'll be going to different parks and in, in all the different city wards. And um, we're trialing it this summer. So in July, we'll start doing that on Fridays. And I know um, talking to the education staff, they're going to do it at two different times on Fridays, one in the morning and one in the late afternoon. Um, but we'll definitely share more information and the dates and the schedule of what parks we'll be at um, before we start going to them. Um, and then that will run through the summer and then we'll evaluate how that went and then make adjustments and, and go from there. But the goal is to, to get out there and um, and be out in the parks. And then in the future, Brian and I and our staff were talking about also coordinating with the Zoomobile and the Bookmobile and, and other facilities we can go to like the schools and the community centers. Uh, we, we have um, still have weekend programming. So that's free. That's always free for the, the visitors at the zoo. Those are our education programs. Uh, where we do, we talk about different animals at the zoo and, and then the kids can come and touch them afterwards. Um, recently, we re reopened the animal contact yard in the farm. So that's where uh, visitors to the zoo can touch and brush the, the goats and the miniature donkeys. Um, that's, that's also the area where I'll talk about in a little bit, where we're working on the goat encounters project using some of the cannabis money because we want to transition that into an area where uh, visitors in the community can go in with the animals uh, because that's always been the, the biggest request is um, people don't want to just touch the animals through the fence. They want to be in there with the animals. So um, that, that project will fix that. Uh, temporary youth exhibits. Uh, recently, we brought an item to city council where there's a couple different vendors that offer uh, educational exhibits for, for kids and we are setting up agreements with them. So over the next couple of years, we can do a, a few different rotating seasonal exhibits. Uh, one would be uh, that we're looking at for spring 2022 uh, would be a live butterfly exhibit where you walk through the mesh habitat and all the tropical butterflies fly around and you can learn about them and see the uh, metamorphosis of the butterflies. Uh, so that, that we're pretty excited about at all the other zoos and, and museums and gardens that have done that. Um, it's been really popular with, with all ages, with kids and then all the way up to grandparents. Um, there's also one with uh, large uh, bugs and dinosaurs, which is always really popular with, with kids. And, um, and then there's a couple um, technology focused exhibits where um, you interact with the technology. You can create animals and put them in different layers and then you see them come up on the screen. So hopefully we'll be able to roll out some of those in the near future. Um, there's been a lot of new signage going out throughout the zoo, uh, replacement of old signs, and then also a lot of new educational interpretive graphics have been going up um, that does talk about the different animals at the zoo, about primates, butterflies, all, all different things. Uh, as far as the operations of the zoo, we're back to full operation. Uh, we don't have any restrictions on capacity. We don't have any restrictions on parking. Uh, all three of the rides are running again. Uh, and, and it's been going really, really well. The, it's been well attended and uh, so far so good. Security cameras, that was a project that's been in the works for a little while. So all of the cameras in our first phase, they're all installed now. Um, they're, they're just putting the finishing touches on the system, but everything is um, connected and, and, and running now. So that's, that's great. Uh, 
Amazon's Edge. That's that's a big project to renovate um, one of the older habitats at the zoo for giant river otters. That's going through the public works process and it's out for for bidding right now. That's where we are, and um, and then hopefully we'll know more in another month or so um, after that wraps up. The the goat trails project that I mentioned before in the farm. That one is just about ready to go into plan check um, so that the planning and building department can review it, review all the engineer drawings and make sure everything looks good and it's safe and, and ready to go out for bidding. Um, so hopefully that will go out for bidding this summer. And what else? Uh, Proposition 64, that was a grant we applied for from the state of California uh, for a nature playground in the farm. Uh, Unfortunately, we were notified that we didn't receive funding for that, um, but it is a grant that reoccurs. So maybe there's a possibility to reapply for that one or, or there's other, other grants that this project might be good for. Um, Prop 68 is for the primate forest. That would be, uh, that's a project to renovate um, the oldest area of the zoo where all the monkeys live. Um, and that project or that grant is going through um, through the review process and we're just continuing on. Um, they'll be doing a site site visit and which is really exciting. And hopefully uh, come late summer, there'll still be some great news for, for Memorial Park and, and for the zoo um, because we asked for eight and a half million for each of those projects. Um, and that's, that's, that's sort of a windfall for parks in California when that grant opportunity comes about. Uh, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, that's another, another grant from the federal government this time from the Small Business Administration. And that's for, um, that's for museums, um, zoos, theaters, movie theaters, any performing arts venues, um, everyone that has been affected, uh, that's a, has a stage and does performances and has been affected by, by COVID and being, been closed. Um, so we applied for almost $700,000 as a reimbursement from that grant, and that one is going through the review process um, as well. But so far, tracking, tracking what the Small Business Administration has been putting out, um, the amount of money requested from all the applicants is less than the amount of money they have available. So that's a promising sign for everyone that has applied. Um, and hopefully, I saw that they were in the third priority group, and I saw that they just started awarding um, funds to the third priority group. So hopefully, we'll know something in the near future. But there was 14,000 applicants, and they're reviewing each of them by hand. Um, so right now, they've only awarded 1,400 um, applicants, and then they have another 6,000 review and another 7,000 in the queue. So we're somewhere in that mix. Um, volunteer updates. We we have um, volunteers come, we've had a lot of volunteers come back, some that we haven't seen for 12, 18 months. So it's great to have them back. They're going through refresher training and they're out in the zoo um, talking to the community, talking to the visitors, um, helping with the, the goat area um, and in the, also with our education programs. And we just did a new tra a training last month and we have another 14 volunteers coming on board and we'll do the next training in August, the, the first Saturday in August. So if you know anyone, uh, definitely refer them over to us and we'd be happy to have them join our crew. Uh, Friends of Santa Ana Zoo, that's our nonprofit support organization. They manage the rides. Um, so they're, they've been focusing on getting all of those up and running, getting everyone trained. Uh, they have to go through a lot of safety trainings. And, and then they're also turning their focus to Zufari, which is their black tie fundraising gala. And they're planning that for Saturday, August 28th. So it's been a little bit of a competition to get things reserved because everyone that has had an event uh, postponed due to COVID wants to do it this summer. So catering and, and rental of equipment, all of that is, is pretty competitive right now. But that's, that's, um, Probably not everything going on at the zoo, but that's enough. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Do we have any questions or comments from the commissioners? I have a question. This commissioner Gomez. My question, Ethan, I know you've, you've mentioned it in the past. What is the age group to volunteer at the zoo? Um, we go down to 14 with their parent 
And then um, 16 and up, they can start volunteering themselves. And depending on their age, there's some opportunities that you need to be over 18 for. Um, but yeah, we do try to make it accessible to, um, to kids that are in high school and in middle school too, to some extent. Thank you. Yeah. I had a question as well. Sure. I'm Commissioner sure Torreblanca. Uh, so I'm really excited for the, the zoo at the park. Uh, and uh, adjacent to that, I'm really excited to bringing, you had mentioned uh, bringing the animals to schools, working with the district. Um, how, how frequently were you folks thinking of, of doing that? And yeah, that sounds good. Um, so the, the zoo in the park program, that one, as, as I, what I know right now about it, uh, we're planning to do it twice a day on Fridays. Um, initially, and then hopefully expanded in the future, um, and then hit a lot of different parks. The um, education staff that are um, going to be doing that program, they actually surveyed every single park in Santa Ana. They physically went there, uh, looked at the park, figured out where they could be, if they could have a table, this just has to be a little tiny table because of the pocket park, or it could be a big setup. Um, and then based on all of the data they collected, they're trying to um, create this program so it, it's appropriate scale-wise. Um, so that's that's what they're rolling out with that. Um, and then the for the schools, that one we don't have organized yet. We're also waiting for a, a vehicle. We, we are ordering a special van similar to the library and that would um, be able to go out to the schools and have a little bit more resources on it um, and some more animals too. But that, so that won't be happening this summer. Um, and then we'd like to coordinate more with, with Brian's team and then um, with some of this place, some of the schools and some of the sites go out in tandem. So there could be literature and crafts that, that also go along with some of the animals and activities we bring. Any additional comments or questions? One last thing. Um, I think that um, we're getting to a point where um, I think we all can go take some tours if you guys want. Uh, so going to the zoo and seeing the um, some of the projects they have going on there as well as throughout the, the park district. So what we can do um, after, before the meeting ends, um, Chairperson, if we can kind of settle on some dates and times, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Did we wanna move on to the next staff report? Mr. Ono, are you available? Hey. Okay, Mr. Ono. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'll be going over the parks facilities operational report. Uh, first going over some major projects that are currently on the construction. We have many projects just starting to the design process. And I'll go at the end, I'll go over some projects that park maintenance staff has completed uh, during the COVID pandemic. So on the first project, I'm not sure if the slide is available. There you go, thank you. On the first part, we're doing a number of ball field and security lighting projects uh, throughout our parks. Um, what you see on the, the second slide is actually uh, Riverview Park site. Not, I'm sorry, the second, go back to the first photo. What you see on top of the slide is a Riverview Park site. Uh, we're, we're changing those old uh, wooden uh, metal halide poles uh, to metal poles and uh, LED lights. The other slide, the other picture you see uh, to the right is the uh, foundation at Morrison Park. We'll be put, installing security lighting, LED security lighting, just like you see in the picture in the corner. Uh, the other items that we're doing that's not there is the uh, El Salvador basketball court. We're actually completely renovating the El Salvador basketball court and putting in brand new sports lighting in the basketball court. At Jerome Park, we're also going to be relighting the West Sports Field with new ball field lighting and LED lights. And we're also going to start uh, the design work uh, for the Pacific Electric by Trail Phase Two uh, that's going to be under construction. Next slide. At Santiago Gas House, the project is well under construction. We've graded and demoed a lot of areas throughout the park site. 
And uh, during that process, we accidentally hit a 12 inch water line that uh, kind of put the grading project uh, on hold until that water line is fixed. It's been fixed now. Uh, and now we're trying to recompact. So we're focusing on other areas in the, in the project uh, while, the, while the turf, while the uh, dirt area uh, dries up. Uh, next slide. Santa Anita uh, Park Improvements. We've already installed a coming soon sign at the park. The project CEQA yeah, is going through approval. Uh, once that's approved, and we will be able to go out to bid. We're scheduling the bid advertising in August, and we hope to complete that project in a year. Next slide. We have about eight uh, ball field lighting, uh, ball field fencing projects that's gonna happen. It's, it'll look like these that's already been completed at, at uh, Angel Park and at Jerome Park. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be starting the ball, the ball field fencing project at Adams, Morrison, Riverview, Delhi, Madison, Rosita, El Salvador, and Heritage Park. Uh, that project's already been awarded and uh, we're, we're getting uh, ready to get started uh, construction. Next slide. Irrigation projects, we're doing two, we've already completed the Adams Park Irrigation Project. We're gonna start the design work for the Cabrillo Park Irrigation Project. We anticipate uh, uh, the city council bid award in early uh, 2022 and then completion by summer 2022. Next slide. A tree and planting projects. Um, we were scheduled to do a planting project at Thornton Park with Peoples and Trees. Unfortunately, uh, the president's secretary just passed away last Saturday. So that project for Thornton that's going to, was, was supposed to happen this Saturday uh, has been canceled until further notice. Uh, we have uh, just uh, finished uh, with Sarah Mae Downing and the Flower Park Neighborhood Association, the completion of the Butterfly Garden at Sarah Mae Downing Park was a great event. Uh, the mayor and Councilman Lopez was there as long as well as around 30 or so uh, neighborhood uh, residents. It was a great project in, that, uh, that uh, the neighborhood completed themselves. Santiago Park Arbor Day uh, planting was done by Stanbridge University on Arbor Day, uh, April 30th. That project is completed and they're looking forward to starting more planting now that the COVID pandemic has been lifted. Next project. Oh, next slide. Um, park maintenance and general maintenance uh, during the pandemic has completed a lot of projects uh, with staffing and contracting. Uh, we've completed uh, replacing the Santa Ana Stadium locker room that was completed on May 12th. Uh, Fisher Park, we landscaped around the, the cannon. That was completed on June 4th. Uh, the Cabrillo Studio Court, that was also completed on May 28th. Uh, we have uh, started renovation at uh, Morrison Park, Patola Park, and Santiago Ball Field. And uh, at the Senior Center, we've completed the landscaping at, in front of the Santa Ana Senior Center. And at Windsor Park, uh, we completed the uh, renovation and replacement of picnic table, tops and seats, around 19 tables were completely renovated at Windsor Park. Next slide. Uh, this project Morrison Park, uh, Memorial Park uh, Proposition 68 application was submitted before. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. We reapplied and uh, they did a state uh, a site visit uh, last year. Uh, and uh, that project uh, hopefully will be reviewed and approved uh, late summer of uh, 2021. Uh, that ends my presentation. Do you have any questions? Um, Commissioner Ramirez here, I have a question. 
Um, is there any any one site or area in which we can find any um, of the dates and times of events maybe happening and going on around the city? Public works, are you talking about construction projects or, pro, or programs? Uh, I would say programs like the, I believe the, the Butterflies of the Park that you spoke about earlier. Um, and all the other programs like the, the planting of trees and one that was canceled this Saturday, like, um, is there anywhere or any website or anywhere that we can find any access or dates or times that are posted so we can attend those as well? We will start posting that on our website. Um, the, the butterfly garden was actually done by the neighborhood, the Florida Neighborhood Association, uh, and, and the, um, Planting at Thornton Park uh, was done by uh, also another nonprofit organization. But as we get involved, we'll we'll let you know and we'll post it on the web. Yeah, and, and what we can do is um, get those directly to you, so you have uh, you know like a month's worth of activities that you may want ahead of time that you may want to participate in. So we'll figure out a vehicle to get that to you uh, ahead of time in case you want to participate for sure. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments? All right. And then up next, we have um, Juan Lora from Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all and uh, meet uh, most of you. Um, again, I'll be presenting the uh, Recreation and Community Services Division report uh, for you this afternoon, and I'll be brief. Um, so let's start off with the good news that uh, we were not able to include on the report that you received as part of your packet, but we're very happy to report that we are moving forward with our reopening plans of our senior centers and our recreation centers. So starting next week, we will be uh, calling all of our seniors at both Santa Ana and Southwest Senior Centers to begin the registration process so that then we can hopefully uh, start uh, programming for our seniors at both facilities as of the week of July 6th. You know, so the seniors have been very uh, eager to come back and they've been asking us at every opportunity they get, uh, you know, to, uh, as to when we are reopening the centers and we'll be happy to let them know that uh, next week they register and the week after they should be able to start again, uh, visiting uh, and spending their day at the senior centers. Uh, and enjoying each other's company. Um, obviously also what they'll be very happily surprised to see once they enter the centers is how both they have been beautifully renovated. Um, so with that, uh, you'll also um, later on receive more information on a uh, grand reopening of both facilities. Uh, so then you can also join us and uh, be able to appreciate the renovations uh, that our seniors uh, will be getting to enjoy very, very soon. Um, our recreation centers are also reopening. We're starting with uh, Jerome and Salgado centers, which are our two larger facilities. And uh, at this time, we are going to fully focus on uh, offering the summer camp program for our elementary uh, school age uh, children. So uh, we have registration underway now, and we will be starting the program as of next Monday. And the program will be offered Monday through Friday from 7.30 in the morning till six uh, o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, uh, previous uh, program participants have been uh, notified and obviously we have all the information on our website and on our social media uh, to promote uh, this program uh, to our community. Um, can I just interrupt you real quick, Juan? I just wanna make sure everyone knows we're also trying, Juan and I are speaking with um, someone to provide birth through three-year-old uh, daycare at some of our facilities, free of charge to our community. Uh, we just need to provide the space. And then we're also looking to uh, uh, provide school age care free of charge. Um, so we're trying to figure something out where we can utilize our community centers. They come in, they staff it, it's free to the community, it's grant funded. And so that will be something that we'll report out to you as soon as we uh, have more information on that. So thank you, sorry to interrupt you, Juan. Uh, no worries, ma'am. Um, but uh, continuing on, um, again, obviously our uh, existing programming continues. 
Uh, we currently are offering our rookie baseball program and we have over 120 uh, participants out here practicing at Jerome Park and uh, the game started last Saturday. So uh, it's great to see if you have an opportunity, please stop by either on a weekday evening to observe the practices or on a Saturday, you know, to, uh, you know, check out some of the games. Our aquatics program is well underway and we are happy to report that all, all of our pools, again, with the exception of Santa Anita, uh, because of the construction project plan there, as you heard from Mr. Rono's presentation, uh, only Santa Anita is non operating at this time, but all of our pools have now officially uh, reopened and are offering aquatics programming to the community. Um, we continue also to offer, obviously, our uh, 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 food uh, programs to our seniors, and that will continue even through our reopening process. So the grab-and-go meals, as well as our commodity program for seniors, uh, will continue uh, once we reopen for full operations at the center. And obviously, um, you know, we'll also look into bringing back our uh, in-house uh, dining opportunity once uh, our provider is ready to also restart that program. Um, in terms of our uh, special event uh, permits, uh, you know, we're obviously, you know, reopened uh, at the state level. And so there's a lot more activity uh, going on when it comes to a uh, special event and filming permits uh, in our parks and, uh, you know, throughout our community, you know, so you'll continue to get that information on the reports. But uh, what we're also most excited to share with you is also the new program that the city uh, will be starting, which is our Movies in the Park program. Um, so starting on August, uh, July, I'm sorry, July 14th, um, we will be having Movies in the Park every Wednesday and every Friday uh, throughout our park system. Um, so we have the information already on our website, but uh, the nuts and bolts of the program is obviously the program will be free to our community. Uh, the movie will be starting at dusk every night. Uh, we will be providing free popcorn to the first 500 attendees uh, to the movie. And obviously families are invited to arrive early so they can reserve their space, but also to uh, bring uh, their uh, picnic baskets and, and blankets so they can then have a nice little uh, uh, picnic dinner uh, at the park prior to the movie. Um, but uh, we're very, very excited about this program, and uh, we feel that it'll be a great uh, contribution, you know, to, again, just uh, welcoming the community back to our, our parks, to the outdoors, and uh, to enjoy some quality time as a family, you know, um, and uh, as a community uh, in our parks. Um, we continue with the planning also for future special events that we'll be having this year, including uh, the 5K in October and Plaza Navideña in November. So we'll provide you with more information as those special events are um, uh, <clears throat> evolving and developing. Um, but for now, I believe that pretty much does it for the Recreation and Community Services Division. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lara. Do any of the commissioners have questions or comments? Yes, uh, it's Ruby Wu, I am here. Uh, I'd like to thank Juan because I found out the Neighborhood Association is very excited about it and we're uh, planning to work with them for the movie nights. It's one of the uh, association's big nights is to have the movie night. So thank you very much. And we're going to be working with Sonia to coordinate with the association. So thank you very much for that program. Yeah, absolutely, our pleasure. And yes, uh, we look to partnering with uh, the local neighborhood associations and ed any other entity that is interested in uh, supporting this program. So we appreciate the support. Also with the program, we're trying, Juan is trying to find translation. So uh, in uh, English, Spanish, or uh, Spanish and Vietnamese, um, but we have, we don't have them for all, um, but we're trying to. So there's headsets available for folks uh, who need translation. So that'll be another great uh, um, thing for the community. Thank you. Do we have any additional comments or questions for Mr. Lada? All right. Next on the agenda is commissioner comments. This is a time for each commissioner to provide comments if you wish, but it's not required. I'll go ahead and start, uh, I'll go ahead and call each commissioner individual, starting with Commissioner Ramirez. Well, um, so far, me, uh, comments from myself would just be that, um, just waiting on a date in which we can do tours and walking around um, on 
parks and in that zoo just to be able to observe and actually uh, get our hands on actual uh, physical activities or, pro or programs or any projects that are coming up just to get a better idea of the impact it has on the environment or just the impact it has on other individuals. Um, the, I, I cannot wait for the days in which we can go visit because those days would be very informative and very helpful to understand um, what to offer and how we can offer it in a better situation in a better manner as well. Thank you, Commissioner Ramirez. Moving on to Ward 2, Commissioner Gomez. My only question was um, if we have a date of when we're going to meet in person, and if so, are we going to keep Thursdays as a date? Yes, the Thursdays are the date, the third, the fourth Thursday of the month. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Sandoval, according to our bylaws? That is correct, Executive Director Runoff. And, and as far as meeting um, in person, we were going to continue these meetings through September until the governor uh, makes the change to the executive order. Um, but you do have the option. We can either, we can't do both, unfortunately, technology wise. We can't have, um, you know, some people in person and some people um, via Zoom. So um, you would have to decide one or the other. Um, so we figured up until September, we'll just continue with the Zoom, but we will have some um, tours scheduled. Um, you know, in per person uh, tours, we'll, we'll grab a, a, a vehicle and take everyone on tour. So, um, whatever the pleasure of the, uh, of the commission is, but we all just need to decide, you know, on one thing or the other. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Gomez. Moving on to Ward 3, Commissioner Moet. Hi, yeah. Um, I remember a couple of meetings ago, we had discussed like the formulation of uh, some sort of internal policy that provided a little more guidelines if we needed to refer to them when it came to um, uh, community outreach when it comes to uh, removing an amenity or maybe adding an amenity to a park. And I was wondering how that's going. Absolutely, yes. Our um, consultant stayed on the line and she listened mm -hmm. to the rest of the meeting. And so what she was going to do is add that into our parks master plan. So we're kind of working through it through the parks master plan and um, we will have something um, uh, as a result of that. So it'll take just a little bit longer, um, but uh, at least it'll be solidified and an and actual policy that we'll follow. And when we're not Great. here, they should follow it. <laughs> yeah, awesome, thank, thank you. you. And um, another thing is, uh, I was gonna ask like if there's anything in particular um, with the new budget approved from city council that you're really excited about, but also you had mentioned that we'll be reporting on that later. Yeah, I, I think um, the, the uh, ARPA money or the revive money is the July 6th. And so we did, um, Ron help me out here with some of our capital improvement projects. We will be getting a new dog park uh, at Centennial Park that was funded. Um, and Ron, can you help me out with the rest of the, um, um, the new parks, the um, Prop 68 yeah, parks there, and such? There's some, addition, there's some additional monies uh, for uh, restrooms, uh, prefab restrooms. Uh, there's some money uh, to look at uh, acquiring property to expand some park sites. Um, uh, what else do we have? I, I don't have the list in front of me. That's basically what I remember. But yeah. More than, than that. There is, and we can uh, definitely report out on that yeah. uh, at the next meeting. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Commissioner Mouet. And then moving on to Ward 4, Commissioner Nelson, but I'm not sure if I see, I'm, I may be missing it, but I don't believe he's. Uh, he's not present, yeah. Okay, perfect. So then we will go ahead and skip to Ward 5. Commissioner Wu? Yes, I am here. I had some technical, uh, technical problems, but I am here now. And I approved the minutes, too. So I hope that's okay for the minutes. I'm very excited to hear of all the projects that are going on. As, you, as I stated already, uh, this, I work with the Neighborhood Association, so I'm very glad to see that the Park and Rec is organizing the movie night. 
I'm also uh, like to know a little bit more about the pop and zoo, but I will research it a little bit later. But uh, I would like to see that at our park. Um, so I'm really excited to see all the new things that are going on. And so uh, thank you very much too for the staff. Thank you so much, Commissioner Wu. Moving on to Ward 6, Commissioner Torreblanca. Hey, folks. Uh, so I am, for one, overjoyed to hear that it was the zoo that mentioned that they were having really low attendance on their online events, uh, because it, for me, it signals that the community is really ready to get back out there and, and really grow as a community. And I'm, I'm really excited to see that as, as it progresses. Um, I know it's been like a very sensitive time for everyone, but I'm really excited to see everyone uh, going on out. I, for one, have seen a lot of uh, traffic through the uh, Pacific Electric Trail. I'm seeing a lot of people really taking advantage of that, a lot of people on that exercise park. Um, and, and it really uh, overjoys me to see the community taking advantage of all of that. I, I love all of the events that are coming on up. Uh, my, my only question was, I, I know last meeting we were talking about some water, um, it was like water filtration tanks. Uh, I wasn't sure if that was approved yet or if there was any update on those. Um, yeah, yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. There is no approval on that yet. Um, so we're still working on that and uh, we'll bring that back once it's, once it's ready to, uh, once it's like 100% drawings, I think we are waiting on. So um, nothing, nothing to report out on yet. That, I yield my time to the chair. Thank you, Commissioner Torreblanca. Um, I just wanted to say the the meetings for the parks master plans have been going really well. There's been a lot of interesting ideas and you know communication from different sides and different angles. But it does seem like everyone is in agreement that we want more safety and more refurbishment. Um, and more equity with our parks as to what which parks get refurbishments and get improvements and enhance, enhancements. So I'm really excited for what that is going to bring to the community for you know the next five, 10, even 15 years. This plan is going to be setting in motion a lot of wonderful enhancements for generations to come. Um, that, those are all the comments that I had. So we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting. The next special meeting is set for Thursday, July 22nd, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Oh, I'm sorry, may I just say one thing? Can we can we talk about the tours real quick? Well, I'll try to get you out of here in like- Oh yes, minutes. of course, I'm so sorry um, about that. Please. No problem. Let's um, tell me when the tours are better for you. Is better on a Saturday or do you wanna take one of your meeting dates? For example, July 22nd, is a meeting date? Do you want to tour on that day? Is it too hard to get out of work or, or whatever? Um, what I'm thinking is if we can take like a three hour block, because anything over that is, is too much. Everybody has busy lives. So if we can do a couple three hour blocks, maybe we spread it out over a couple months. But I'd like to bring you to some of the sites that are going to be improved, some of the things that are in our budget and, and that are about to happen. Um, so would you want to do that on a Saturday or, or a board meeting uh, day? Your choice. Um, speaking for me, it's either having it during a scheduled meeting or Fridays and Saturdays are very good for me. Okay. Um, if that didn't work for the other members, um, I, there is some wiggle room. Um, however, Wednesday is a very hard day for me to find time. Okay. Um, our Saturdays, should we try for a Saturday in uh, perhaps uh, July or August? Um, would that work? Okay. Um, Lisa, for me, Saturday works a little bit better. Friday okay. also work for me because I flex every other Friday. Okay. Um, but if we are going to schedule something Saturday in July, I know it's going to sound like a pain, but I'm filling up quick, so I need to. No, I know. I, I understand. Yeah. We, we may have to do maybe um, a couple. The first week of August? In August, yes. Yeah. Let, let's shoot for August here. So let's, let's shoot right now for um, Saturday, August 7th or 14th. 
Seven. Yes, ma'am. Seven. 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 August 7th, okay for everybody? Yes, um, yes. good for me. Okay. Uh, only in the morning though. Okay, great. Well, that's what we'll do. Let's do, um, will nine o'clock be okay? Perfect. So we can start at nine and then maybe we can, we'll finish out. We'll bring you some lunch. We'll, we'll meet somewhere and we'll get on a, a, a bus, whatever. And, uh, um, you know, maybe do it three hours and then, you know, have some lunch and you guys can take off. Okay, we'll do that. I'll schedule that and we'll um, uh, get you some information for sure. Perfect. Okay, and also one more thing. We usually go dark in August, meaning there's no, uh, the city council goes dark uh, in one meeting in August. Your August meeting is scheduled for uh, Thursday, August 26th. Do you want to have that meeting um, or not? I mean, we'll have the August 7th. That's, that's technically a meeting because people can show up to that tour. Um, but we could also have the August 26th meeting if you want also. I think if I, my personal preference, I think if we're meeting already. The best for business. Oh. Say again. Commissioner Wu, did you have a comment? I was just saying that uh, whatever, if if needed, but like you, the, the seventh is just fine. Okay. So you want to just keep the seventh and, and be dark on the uh, 26th of August? If there's Sounds something good. that comes up, we can always have a special meeting also. So, um, you know, the chair or the, the commission can call a special meeting uh, if need be. So we'll just, we'll go ahead and go dark on the 26th. We'll meet on August 7th. And then also, if we need another tour, maybe we'll hit another tour in September, uh, if that works for you guys. Okay, beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Executive Director Rudolph. Um, so uh, this is the conclusion of the meeting. Like I said, the next special meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 24th. Oh, I'm sorry, not June 24th. Thursday, July 22nd, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes, I motion to adjourn. Commissioner second. Wu. Perfect. Um, and who was it that seconded? I'm sorry to hear. Torreblanca. Commissioner Torreblanca, thank you very much. Recording secretary, can you do a roll call for vote? Commissioner Wu. I approve. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. I approve. Commissioner Moet? Yes. Commissioner Torre Blanca? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. So meeting is adjourned at 6.34 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.